What's happening, YouTube? Wadok Studios here, and um, in the past, uh, I say in the past, two videos ago, before the Epic Online Services uh, plugin for Godot video, I did a video on Arc Raiders, and I talked about um, how they're the goats of UE5, and they're using a custom engine branch um, that utilizes both PhysX and uh, RTX GI, uh, specifically a uh, uh, probe-based uh, DDGI method, and um, I mentioned a branch in UE5 for those of you who are interested in staying with UE5 but want to have a more performant path to work in versus, like, say, Lumen and Nanite. Well, in that vein, um, I got curious because, I, you know, I'm supporting um, Unreal Engine 427+, Plus. I have a meta branch, um, I still tend to lean on 427 for uh, a lot of work due to the fact that it's just battle tested. Um, there's less churn there. There's, you know, uh, it's kind of stabilized. It, it at this point it really is what it is. Um, so I got curious and I was like, can I do a very similar path to what Embark is doing for like Arc Raiders in the fighter finals, but do it in, in 4.27.2, which is the last launcher build of Unreal Engine 4. 20, uh, Unreal Engine 4. Um, so uh, if you go to the, uh, all of these links will be in the description, by the way. But if you go to NVIDIA's RTX GI uh, DDI branch, you'll see they have a couple of branches here. I say branch, but their GitHub page. They have a 1.0, 1.2, uh, 1.1, 1.2, etc. But if you go to main and you go down to 427 underneath the UV4 plugin, so if I was just to go to uh, main here, you'll see that there's a UV4 plugin um, alongside the SDK. If you click that, then you're going to see uh, it split out. It's labeled 427 slash RTX GI. Um, you would want to essentially just grab this and pull you can get a zip from the top level and just pull this rtx gi out and then you would place it um in a project like i have this return to retro uh, i have the rtx gi here and it comes with a readme that will come later the second thing i want to mention is that um i've did a bunch of digging and searching around, and uh, I'll also include a link to this, but I ran across a, uh, a DLSS 3.7 version for 4.27, and what that means is it comes with ray reconstruction. Now, digging through NVIDIA's GitHub source, they have DLSS uh, GitHub just like they have the RTX GI, GitHub, but I was unable to find a 3.7a version of this plugin within anything on NVIDIA's website, their download links as well. Um, that source was the only place that I could find that specific plugin. Um, now we'll go over to this project. So this project has been set up to take advantage of this. Um, again, you'll see in the plugin section, I have them both here. If we type NVIDIA here, you'll see that I have DLSS and uh, Global Illumination both enabled. Um, you will need to read the README because there are CVARs to enable these things. Um, if you hit the tilde key and you type RNGX, this is going to be how you enable DLSS. Um, in the viewport here on the left, if you pop this down, you're gonna have a DLSS settings here. So you can toggle your settings in the viewport just by clicking these here, and it will update your screen percentage for you. Um, and then for the uh, for the global illumination, you're gonna need r.globalillumination experimental plugin equals one to enable it. And then you're gonna need uh, RTX DDGI one to enable that. Once you do both of those CVARs, um, you'll be able to pull this volume into your scene. Uh, if I scroll down here, you'll see it's labeled RTX DDGI volume. Now I'm not going to pull one out because I already have it, 
Um, so I'm just going to hit tilde key to clear this out and we'll find the DDGI volume here. Um, because there's a couple of things that I want to go over with this really quick. Um, you basically, just like Voxel GI and Unity are in Godot, you scale the volume to surround or encompass your level. If I was to scoot this up here, you can see it impacts the, the bounce lighting and GI in the, in the, in the volume. Um, and if we was to go to my scene, you'll see that my directional light is, is completely disabled. Uh, because this is a nighttime scene. So all of the lighting you see is actually coming from the skybox or the skylight and just the point lights that are in the scene. So um, yeah, this is all just ray tracing doing its thing. If I was to back up from this extremely, extremely far, the shadows that are being cast are pretty much infinite, like because that's just how, how this works. Um, and then over here on the uh, DDGI volume side, you can enable, once you've done that, you can enable the probe visualiz uh, visualization, and this will show you how dense your probes are. And then uh, on your probe settings, you'll have rays per probe. This is gonna be like when you're playing in Barks Arc Raiders, what the low, medium, dynamic settings are. Um, you're just want to you'll want to have some va values here that that spread your probes out evenly over your geometry so it's it's not really a scale transform it's more like how many probes per x y and z coordinate you have so you just want to have those kind of evenly spread and not not too dense but not too sparse either and then um your uh the only other thing is you have these independent um light multiplier emissive multiplier values that you can tweak for the lighting of the scene that you want and then you can adjust how your your skylight is going to impact your um your scene raster's the default that's what i've left it at it seems pretty cheap this way and it and it updates the scene in a way that i would expect um and then this 10-bit irradiant scalar is going to allow you to kind of pump the emissive values up so that you your your global illumination uh matches your material strength for the amount of emissive properties that you're pushing so you have these kind of independent values that you can adjust um now this is my return to retro scene it's not really that interesting but uh i can save that out we'll go load this bunker up and hit play because i ooh, sorry that was loud um you might not even be able to hear it because uh, I don't think I have the, the computer audio going. But yeah, you can see I'm, I'm busting near 200 frames per second here. This is not baked, even though it looks baked. Um, for a deferred rendering pass, um, to me, you know, and some people may not think that, think, think or agree with this, but to me, this image is much more stable than what I get out of Lumen software ray traced global illumination. Um, and the performance is by far better uh, in a scene as detailed as this running real time with all of these dynamic, because all of these lights are dynamic uh, casting lights. So every, every single light in here is movable, um, nothing, nothing is static nothing is baked but the you know even right here on the edge of this you can see the bounce lighting actually illuminating the back side of this here where if i was using sign distance field lighting or uh csms um first and foremost at a distance uh you would you would start seeing this the cascade of the shadows the quality would would reduce uh on the csm shadows um also Right here with the ray reconstruction, you can see the, the reflections look really good and the denoiser is much better than UEFI's default denoiser. Um, and we're not getting the shimmering or the artifacting that you would usually see out of a UE5 project. Um, the AO looks really nice. Things are super dark underneath here. I mean, looking at this with a still scene, I would, I would assume this would be baked um just because of the fall off and the way the light is 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 blending here 
And the funny thing is, is my probes in this scene are not uh, densely packed. And um, yeah, it's just looking really, really great. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in a workflow uh, on Unreal Engine 4 that can get you, um, you know, lighting quality, dynamic GI lighting quality, pretty close to Unreal Engine 5 um, and save you some performance because you're still able to run physics instead of chaos. Um, you know, you have the, the much lighter SM5 shading model to utilize um, and you just get that really good lighting out of your scene. Um, you This might be the plug-in combination for you. Um, now, <clears throat> some questions that have come up about this in the wild Ox studios discord and by the way if you haven't already like and subscribe and check out the the d description link for the wild Ox studios discord we have godot people unity people unreal engine people over there uh really you know engineers artists etc and uh we would love to have you but some questions that have come up have been centered around well do i need a ray tracing card to use dd uh ddgi with with rtx gi and the answer to that is no because it utilizes um direct x 12s rhi and in that api they have the ability um so that is a change that you will have to make in order to use these plugins um they have direct x 12 has the ability to handle ray trace logic and nvidia have written this in a way that if you don't have rt cores then it'll fall back um, to low. It'll still, like, say you have a 10, 10, uh, GTX 1090 Ti. You can force it to do the ray tray pass. You can force DDGI to actually be dynamic on low settings uh, with that card. Um, and, and depending on how complex your scene is, you might actually be able to pull it off and stay above 60 hertz because it's just so light. Like, it can be customized to be, like, really light. Um, and that would, the other thing that you could do is this even works on like, say a steam deck, right? Is you can run runtime static. So if you check this box and you save the map, it's the equivalent of like baking your GI into light maps. It's just storing it per probe and it's now static within the scene per probe. And if you go that route, the funny thing is, is that you can pump this raise per probe up when you go to bake this out and hit save. And now when we play, um, the see, this uh, scene here is fully statically lit GI. So none of this is dynamic, um, but the quality that you're getting, um, so let me let me get this, let, let me clarify this. The, the lights are still dynamic and will sh cast shadows. The GI itself is baked. So it's a hybrid solution. So like if an emissive moves around right now, it's not gonna, transform the global illumination that you see but the gi that you get just like you get on the dynamic one is actually baked in from the probes and, and feeding into the environment and you end up like with a really high quality gi but it's fully baked out so um these can run on non like you baked it with your ray trace card it stores it in almost like bytecode and then people without ray tracing cards can actually run this so um, yeah, you kind of get the best of both worlds in that nature. Um, and, and you still get really, really, really good quality, uh, when you do that. Now, you know, if you, if you want to chew on less data in the probes, uh, even, and you want to cut that back, then you can all also like bump this down to defaults, uh, clear your probes out, let them, let them repopulate again, save. And then when you run, um, you'll be, you know, you'll, you'll basically be chewing on less data, but from my testing, I haven't seen where at runtime static GI is that big of a hit for you. It's like five frames chewing on that extra bit of data. If it's static versus dynamic, it's, it's really not a huge hit. Um, you know, and I, I don't, you know, if I was to turn ray tracing off right now and reload the project with this in it, it everything looks the same. If I package it out and I, you know, hard 
like set my r dot ray tracing to know um everything looks the same so uh yeah hopefully this helps you guys out this looks like something interesting to people that are you know um trying to stay diverse uh, kind of diverse in their tool bag their tool set um maybe are looking for you know not focusing on engine problems so to speak but just kind of wanting to get, go ahead and get into like you know developing their game on something that's pretty battle tested and has a you know solid timeline of workflows and stuff behind it um it's it's a little weird get wrapping your head around the way that lighting works with with this setup because um it's a little small upfront cost and then you know if i was to type point lights here um there's there's so many of them in this scene there's a ton of them and they're all movable and um and i'll go show the uh optimization um view mode for the light complexity uh it's it's extremely extremely expensive on on you know the light complexity with all of these movable lights like this is just for these to be shadow casting and movable at the same time this is just like it says it down at the bottom extremely bad right like this is not something that you would do in a normal deferred pass but the weird thing about the way this works is you kind of chew on the ray tracing costs up front and the scalability of this as it scales out um for each additional point light and shadow casting light it seems to it just seems to scale very very friendly like it, it doesn't it doesn't it's not like forward rendering where you go to your knees in a, a clustered forward rendering pass or like it cuts off dynamic casting lights and it's not like deferred where if it's shadow casting like you can pay for it in the buffer up front if it's a dynamic light and it moves around but if it's shadow casting after a hundred or so you're going to start you know coming to a crawl because your cascade shadow map cost kind of gets up in numbers and then you're also paying a little bit for the extra draw for every uh depth pass that you're having to pay for um so yeah with with ray tracing it's it's weird it's like you know you're you're paying the per pixel cost and deferred in the g buffer like you normally would but then you're paying for the the depth checking the shadow casting part of that during the ray trace um and and the ddgi and it covers the like those those probes cover the entire scene so you pay for it boom all at once um and it just scales really great um so i think like if you want to think about it in the terms of like marketing terms it would be kind of the equivalent of what they're doing right now with like lumen and nanite and mega lights where they're trying to handle the BVH for such complex geometry for ray traced lights. Um, and they're trying to do it in a way to where you can scale those lights out to as many as you want while you're doing nanite rasterization. But, you know, they've had to fall back on less complex geometry and they've had to deal with how do we do that? How do we get the same thing that we could technically do with, you know, LODs, HLODs and and non-changing geometry um static geometry with ray tracing how can we do that over there where you know the mesh shaders are constantly changing on them um so yeah you can kind of think about it like that over here in lod land and hlod land non-nanite land ray tracing is going to trace against the geo the geo is not really going to change that much like you might have a, you know some hlod going on here or there um but your overall cost it's kind of like you've set it aside you pay for it you have your ddgi handle and your thing and, and you're good to go um yeah it's 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 uh i'm pretty excited about it um can't believe i kind of stumbled across this uh just by chance i was curious and uh looked into it after a few questions were asked in the discord and uh yeah um i could say you know Go forth, have fun. Uh, until next time, guys, happy developing and toodles.